episode we're going to look at two things we're going to look at the freeze machine uh, which is a cassette disc or anything backup utility really for your Commodore 64 and we're going to find out if it actually does what it says is it a piece of hardware that was oversold or is it a piece of hardware that does what it should do and what it said on the tin and um, we're also then going to have a look at Star Force Fighter at the end of it on part two because it's a game that has a surprising loading element to it which is something you don't see nowadays and uh, it's something that I feel you know really shouldn't be lost on you know everyone who's into these classic machines and it shouldn't also be lost be lost on the current generation of point click and done users because it's part of um, kind of part of the history of these machines and how they paid programmers got around you know the boredom of waiting for long loading intros Today we're going to look at the um, trusty old Commodore 64C today. It's not so much the computer, it's this piece of kit called the Freeze Machine. I don't think there were many of these made and all produced or bought to be honest because I think they were quite expensive. But if you have a look at it on the back of the machine, it has two buttons on the back, one's freeze and one's reset. Quite explanatory, self-explanatory really, but we'll come to what these buttons do in a minute. It's meant to be used with tape, which is one here. Or, good old 1541 disk drive but what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to use the 1541 disk drive because I'm actually going to start using more modern kit on this machine and uh, it will be an SD drive for this it's basically a bare SD drive which I'm going to use and configure for this machine so as you can see alongside the um, freeze cartridge is a, a bare SD drive plugged into the serial port and it's powered from the cassette port down here. So we're going to use this. I'm going to load a game and save a game off of this um, because mainly because cassette tapes take a while but we're going to come back to the cassette tape in a little while for part two of this. Now when you power on the machine now it's got a, an SD drive in it so what we're going to do um, is we're going to just show you what happens when we power on this machine from scratch. You'll get the same screen. And it comes up with Freeze Machine, okay? And it's produced by Eversham Micros. Now, first thing you're going to do is you notice you can go straight to basic okay you can um, pokes and restart basically that allows it clears the registers that it uses for this machine so it couldn't it's not going to interfere with any software and then you've got directory and that is what is on the disk okay so normally you'd have to do the normal disk commands um, with this um, SD machine and an SYS to make it run okay but this one's actually picked it up amazingly well there's no other commands to use to get this drive to run and it just sees it as a normal everyday Commodore disk drive which is good so that's what's on the disk itself so it knows that it's got a disk drive attached looking at the directory again The only thing you can't do, as you've probably noticed, is sort of skirt around the directory because you can't really, you can't actually do any sort of moving around and manipulating. It's just showing you what is on the machine or on the disk or what it thinks is the disk. So it'll return. Now, if I press I, it'll install a laser boot to the um, disk drive. I don't particularly want to do that. I know it's fast loading, but I've got other stuff on here which I need to use with other machines so I'm going to stay away from the lazy utilities at the moment 
because it does the same it's just a very quick loader but it uses a lot more disk space so I'm going to go to basic so what we're going to do is we're going to load in everything from the drive okay so it's coming up so if I type run there we go and what it's done is what you see here is not normal okay because as I said what you see here is not usual because when you run a, an SD drive one of these on its own you have to type in an SYS command to actually make it run properly and to see it and use the drive properly now with the freeze machine in you've got instant drive which is brilliant so if I go to games now And there's the games okay there's some of the games on this drive okay so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to get Galaxy and running because it's quite a simple one and and it'll load in a minute remember it's emulating a Commodore 1541 drive uh, unfortunately it is just as slow which is I think where this lazy utility will come in but I don't want to basically mess up this SD card because I've got other stuff on it but as you can see it's not that bad and it runs so I press F1 press F1 to start the game so if I press freeze on this now you get a load of different colored bars and it freezes the game after only a few seconds you come up with a menu which will do your backup it will also do partial backups and the game killer is um, if you really want to cheat on games so the collision detection doesn't work um, so if I now want to go backup B name okay Galaxians 1 now it says output device okay so normal disk so we'll try normal disk 1 and instantly saving it and it should only take a relatively short time so you can see the the little disk drive light is flashing away okay so now it asks you if you want to make another backup and if you want to um, transfer the Nova file so I don't want to make another backup because that's fine so I want to go no and then it asks you to basically press reset hold Commodore key to restart and then basically it will reset the memory okay so I'm going to press reset hold the Commodore key and it should come up as a, as a normal game back to your game the it doesn't even know it's actually been copied okay so it's quite good so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the game in from scratch so I'm just going to reset the machine and there we have it we got back to the main screen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to basic and what I'm going to do now is basically get this um, machine running again okay and it just sees it as a, a standard floppy drive basically um, okay so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look for the games okay you can see the original Galaxian there and Galaxians 1 which is what we saved a, you know a short while ago a few minutes ago so if I press re load Galaxians 1 it should then come up with the game not the fastest thing in the world but you know it does load at the same speed as the original drive and that's exactly where we froze it so it works fine so now what we're going to do is we're going to freeze it and see if we can speed the loading time up so I'm going to freeze this here and let it do its thing so we can get back to the main menu okay back at the main menu I'm going to back it up and we're going to call it Galaxians 3 and this time we're going to fast disk it okay so fast disk 
and you can see it change immediately on the screen make another backup that's how quick it is no and then we're going to reset the machine and it'll take you back to where you were with the game so completely turn the machine off we're going to reinstall it and we're going to load it again and see how quick it is compared to the other one so i'm going to find it on the the disc return to basic every time I'm going to go straight for games and we're going to look for Galaxian and then Galaxian's 3. Now let's see how much quicker this is. So this is real time loading this game. Okay and it just starts off where it's finished okay so it always just takes a snapshot of where you were. Now, the freeze machine has a few limitations with modern SD cards. The, um, the fast loader, yeah, it kind of doesn't work all the time, okay? Um, because what you need to do is you need to actually set the disk up as a fast loader. But it would set the whole SD card up as a fast loader, which is a bit silly really especially if you've got a lot of programs on it but it does work and it installs things like you know small programs like galaxians and stuff like that in not even a third of the time it's really really quick and you've got your loader directory here so if i wanted to do zero you can see that's a program and basically it tells you everything that's on here and you can sort of skip around and do what you want to it load it install it and so on but the biggest problem we have with this is that it's not particularly set up for modern kit it does work but it doesn't work every time when you do the fast loader so I'm going to try the laser okay and, but again, what you need to do is to fast format your drive, your disk rather. And as you've got a, maybe a 64 gig SD card in there, it's, it's really convenient if you want to put all of your files on as a fast loader or a laser loader. But using fast loaders or laser loading on a SD that you really want to use for other stuff, it's not convenient because it won't be read by anything else. Okay, so anything you put on there that's not formatted or how hasn't been converted to a laser format if it was on laser disk or on the laser formatting disk on this or the fast formatting disk, um, then it won't work. Okay, so it's really good. I mean, it's a really good system of copying data and copying programs and what I'll do is I'll also show you a few of the other features now. So we'll just um, go over them. So if I return to basic, okay, just return to normal basic. And okay, so I'll go back to my drive on my disk, emulated disk. I go to, let's say I go to games. And this time I'll pick something else. I'll... Um, I'll do Zaxxon and just let that install. Okay, so this is Zaxxon installed. It's quite an early game, and now if I want to freeze it, okay, there it is, it's frozen. If I want to make a backup now. Subsequent parts is quite good because what you can do with this is if it's got multiple loads You can then install all the multiple loads by using subsequent parts, but this is a single 
hit game basically one single file once you've loaded your subsequent part then when you save it as a backup you do the transfer nova files which are all of your subsequent parts on here but if i want to do game killer and if i want to take both the collision and the sprite collision off you see and then i can save the file onto your hard well onto your emulated floppy drive and he said hard disk there and um, then when you load this back in you've got no way of killing yourself so you can zoom through the entire game without having a problem with you know being killed or extra lives and so on which is quite good really you know if you wanted to kind of cheat on a game and your fast load utilities you have um, fast format which you can format your, your disk quick format basically like you would in DOS um, instant copy copy the program that you want to copy such as a disk etc and um, so if we go to enhancement and the enhancement system the enhancement allows you to copy over protected files as well so it's kind of an all-in-one unit so as we turn back to the main screen, it's literally an all-in-one piracy unit. Really, it will pirate just about anything. Okay, it will copy them, allow you to cheat, allow you to make backups, as they say, of your own software. Um, kind of doesn't mean you pass it around your friends and get all of their software as well. But um it also allows you to install fast boot and laser boot disks, so which is um, really, really good, especially if you're using an original 1541 drive without any any expander cartridge. So this isn't really, I mean, basically it allows you to do most things, and I didn't think it was going to be as useful or as good as it is. It copies everything absolutely spot on no problems it works with modern hardware which was good and i actually thought it was going to be a, a medicine man piece of hardware very similar to the hypertape which um you know you probably see in one of my previous episodes but this isn't this works this is genuine it's good and um, i would suggest if you do get one and you want to back up maybe some of your own software some of your disk software um, or even some of your tape software to a modern format then I would highly recommend it but the only thing you really should be doing is trying to get a disk or an emulated disk drive um, IEC drive to um, allow you to power it not from your cassette port but from a separate power supply because if you do that you'd be able to then copy your cassettes straight onto the disk drive the drive because it's already in memory you could in theory unplug the cassette while it's switched on which is not a brilliant thing to do um, and then swap it over for, to power your drive um, but try and get an externally powered one okay um, and that would solve all of the problems and it would be a great asset one of these to back up your cassette software okay so that was the Commodore 64 and the freeze machine yeah I actually think it was a brilliant piece of hardware you know the ethics behind it were probably not as brilliant because in the day um there was a lot of problems with piracy and um i think it would have been frowned upon you know the company that built it um did a really good job with it and it does everything that it said it would do in fact it works with modern hardware which is a bonus for something that's you know three plus decades in age and it could be useful today i mean you could back up your cassettes if you you know you've got an external floppy drive emulator with a an external power supply on it so you didn't have to hog up the power lines from the cassette 
port and um, I think it would be very good addition to your computer collection and it will also allow you to back up other discs and other formats as long as you can get it in memory on this it will back it up which I think is um, quite a neat thing it also enhances your SD floppy drives because on some of them when you load them in you have to basically run them and then insist them to get them to work this does it automatically this um, you know you don't need to do that with this and it makes it much more convenient to use the drive than it um, does normally which again is a bonus and it's also got a reset button on it which a lot of these bits of hardware seem to include a reset button as a matter of course because sadly the 64 was missing a genuine reset at the end of the day it was a nice piece of hardware did what it was supposed to do it's a worthy addition to anyone's collection and it was something that I'll really use in the future when I need to make backups or copies of other things and it makes this copy in a breeze and then we come on to the Star Force fighter game and that Space Invaders intro while it was launching you don't see that today and it's fantastic to see it um, brings back a lot of memories for when these machines were current and it also blew the mind of a lot of people when you could actually have not just music on pictures while it was loading which was you know stunning enough in the day but in actual game and with the way they did it as well it was a playable game and the music that they put with it made it a lot more entertaining and a lot more exciting and um, it would have been a good standalone game for a Vic 20 let alone a loader game so we're going to try Star Force Fighter and not mainly because of the game which is actually quite a good little shoot 'em up but because of what it does while loading and people have forgotten what the technology and time that went into making these loaders work on machines such as the Commodore 64 with only a very limited amount of memory and it's also running obviously from cassette tape so what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at it now so we're just going to load the machine and load the game into the Commodore 64 now it's on tape so it's going to take a while okay so Star Force is on its way and within seconds we have the game It's actually quite a tricky game as well, it's not easy by any means, but it would be something that Vic 20 would have been proud of. And it's actually just the loading screen. And then onto the game itself. Which almost seems less frantic compared to the um, loading screen or the loading game. Still a decent shoot them up though. I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope you've enjoyed watching this and seeing what we can get up to with these classic machines 
and I hope you join me on this channel in the future. Okay, so if you'd liked it, hit subscribe and I hope to see you again on this channel. Thank you. Thank you for watching. See you later.